welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, just over a year ago, I published a video on the MFJ1708 SDR pan adapter interface, which at the time was the only real commercial product like this. However, after doing some research, I found this item on the Banggood website and I proceeded to order one. Now, not only is this less than half the price of the MFJ product, this is actually better built, which isn't that hard really. Now in the box, we get a 3.5 millimeter jack with a red and white black wire. This is used for controlling the PTT. I actually use this to make a cable to connect to my FT991A. I'll show you that later. And we also get a small SMA patch lead, which is used for the SDR. And we also get there a power cable. Now the specification label underneath details that this unit can handle up to 100 watts from DC to 160 megahertz. So that's all of HF, 6, 4 and even the 2 meter amateur bands. Now one thing that you'll notice on the specification label is the release time, which is 190 milliseconds. And unfortunately this is fixed with no manual way to change this. I'll talk more about this surely, but also why it isn't really that much of a big deal. Now the case is all solid aluminium and on the front we have a green LED and a red LED. As well as switching between SDR and radio for the RF side of things, there are also three 3.5mm audio jacks at the front in case you wish to switch audio. On the rear of the unit we have two SO239 sockets which are for your radio and your antenna and then we have a dedicated SMA female connector to which you connect your SDR receiver. We also have a 13.8 volt input to power the unit. And then we also have a PTT socket, which is a 3.5 millimeter jack. And of course it uses ground to activate the PTT. Now I mentioned earlier about the release time and it's not adjustable on this unit. Now this refers to the RF sense feature, which when it detects RF on the input, it will automatically switch the radio connection to the antenna. However, when using SSB and as an SSB signal is not constant while keyed, we rely on the release time to keep the unit switched while we're talking. As the release time is actually quite low, we do see some relay chatter when using SSB. And that's not good because we want to keep the unit from switching between SDR and radio while we're talking. On FM and AM, of course, it's perfectly fine because it's a constant carrier. So to counteract this would be to use the PTT function and in my opinion, is actually the safer solution. So by hooking up the PTT to your radio's PTT ground pin, normally located on one of the pins on one of the rear radio ports, this will ensure that the antenna switch will always be routing your radio to the antenna while you're holding the PTT on. Now, if we take a quick look inside this unit, we can see that it's built extremely well, far better quality than the other SDR switch that I reviewed last year. Now in the middle of the board, you'll notice a jumper. Now what this does is allow the radio to receive as well as the SDR. With the connection open, both the radio and the SDR will be connected to the antenna in receive mode. With the jumper closed, only the SDR will receive and the radio will be disconnected for the antenna while in receive mode. So when you transmit, the antenna is routed to the radio through the relays and the SDR port is actually grounded. Now this is very good precaution so that your SDR receiver is not damaged while you're transmitting. So here we have everything connected up, the antenna attached to the SDR switch and then a patch cable from the SO239 on the radio to the radio's HF port. Now the PTT line then is then connected to the PTT ground within the linear jack on my FT991A and then a small SMA patch cable going to my SDR play RSPDX, which is sat on top of the SDR switch. Now, as we can see here, when pressing the PTT on the microphone, the green receive LED will go out and you can hear the relays clicking. Now, one thing to point out here is that when you have the internal jumper set to open so that the receive goes to the SDR and the radio at the same time, then the red LED will always be illuminated. Now, if you short the internal jumper so that the receive only goes to the SDR, then the red LED is off during receive and on during transmit. I'm not entirely sure why it needs to be always on when you're in dual receive mode, but I thought I'd point that one out. 
Now, before I show you how to set up the software, I just wanted to go over this diagram so you could visualize how everything connects together. So firstly, we have our antenna, which connects to the antenna port of the SDR switch. We then have a patch cable, which goes from the SDR switch to the radio antenna port. We then have a PTT cable between the radio and the SDR switch. Now, most HF radios will have a PTT line that goes to ground when transmitting. Now, you may need to consult your radio's manual to find which pin of which port on your radio is the correct one. Now, some radios do actually have a dedicated PTT phono jack on the back of the radio, so it may be worth checking. Now, the SDR port on the SDR switch then goes off and connects to our SDR receiver. In my case, I'm using the SDR Play RSPDX. Now, the software running on my computer is SDR Uno, which is my choice of SDR software. But most SDR software packages will support remote tuning via OmniRig. The computer will have one USB cable going to the radio, which is for cat control, although some older radios still have a dedicated serial port. And then we have another USB cable that goes from the computer to the SDR receiver. Now we use OmniRig as a middleman piece of software between SDR Uno and the FT991A in my case here. OmniRig will need to be configured to work with your radio, such as the correct COM port and correct communication speed. Now within SDR Uno, you can click on the settings button and then select the O-Rig tab. Make sure that you have the correct options ticked as shown here on the screen. This will enable SDR Uno to talk to the radio via OmniRig. Now you may be using a different SDR software, but fundamentally the settings will still be the same. Now as you can see here, as I change the frequency on SDR Uno, the frequency also changes on the radio. And then when I key the mic on the radio, you'll also notice that SDR Uno goes into audio and RF mute, further protecting the RSPDX receiver from the strong RF coming from the radio while it's transmitting. Now the FT9918 does have its own waterfall live band scope on the screen, but it only shows you a small portion of it and it's not really 100% real time, it's kind of jittery. So by using this SDR switch, I'm actually able to see the whole of the amateur band that I'm looking at. And I can see the whole activity on the 80 meter band. And at the click of a mouse, I can tune to that frequency. And then if I wanted to, I could go ahead and call CQ or call the station that's calling CQ. Uh, first of all, good evening to Southern Poland. Uh, my name is Oliver and I am in Bavaria, Southern Germany, Will. Uh, yeah, difficult to give you a real report. Would say it is a five and nine, five seven to nine, five seven to nine. 5, 7 to 9. Not very strong, but uh, I try to do my best. Will so uh, put it back to you. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief overview of a rather neat and well-built SDR switch that gives you a full band pan adapter using any radio. Now, there doesn't seem to be a manufacturer name or even a model number for this particular item. But I will leave a link in the description below to where you can purchase this from. Now, as mentioned before, I got this from Banggood. And if you click the link in the description, it will take you over to the Banggood website. Now, if they don't have any in stock at the time of when you check it out, don't worry. Place your order and you will get it once it's restocked, as it does appear to be quite a popular item. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.